Okay, so the reason that we talk about positional systems, it does have some modern application. One of the primary places is in technology and computers uh, where different bases, because computers, I'll spoil it for you, Computers tend to think in base two, uh, so this has some application. So before we go on to talk about other bases, let's just remind ourselves of the base 10 positional values and the rightmost value, we discussed this earlier, is the units. And then for the base 10, every place value that I go as I go to the left is going to be how many times the previous one. 10, thank you for playing along, I appreciate it. So 10, and then the next one's gonna be 10 times that, so 10 squared. The next one's gonna be 10 times that, so 10 to the third, and 10 times that, 10 to the fourth, 10 times that, 10 to the fifth, and then we're all tired of doing that, so I'm just gonna put an ellipsis here on the front, and it just keeps following that pattern. Okay, so that's where we've been. Now we're going to apply this in a novel way. So let's say that we were born and grew up on a planet where we all had eight fingers instead of 10 fingers. Okay, so now let's just say our number system was base eight instead of base 10. What would the places be for base eight? So I'm gonna start you off. The first one would be our units, just like before. But then if I was base eight, what would the next place be? Eights. Okay, so I would be thinking if we had eight fingers, okay, if that's the way we that's the way we were designed and developed, then we would be think we would think in groups of eight, probably is how it would instead of groups of ten. So then the next place would be eight times that. So groups of 64, which I'm just gonna write as eight squared. And then the next place would be groups of eight to the third. And then the next place would be groups of eight to the fourth. And again, I'm just going to use an ellipsis. It's the same thing on and on. You tracking with me right there? Okay. So here's what I want you to do. Just to, we're practicing this. Exercise one, I want you to write the first five positions, just like we did. And you can do more if you feel, feel like it. But do the first five positions if we were in a base six system. Okay, if we counted in sixes. And so again, we'll start with our units here off on the right. And then what is going to be my next position? Sixes. Then my next position is going to be the six squared or groups of 36. And then the next position is going to be, I wrote, oh, wow. There we go, six squared. I corrected that one, though. I got it. You don't get to call me on that one. The next position is going to be what? six to the third, and then six to the fourth, and then six to the fifth, and you can go on and on as many as you want, but there's the ellipsis. Those are the places for a base six system. Each place is six times the previous one. So one more time, uh, do that once again for a base two system. That's the next question. And so once again, I'm going to have my units. And then since this is a base two system, each place is going to be twice. So we've got our twos and then our two to the seconds and then our two to the thirds and two to the fourths and two to the fifths. And again, you can go on and on and on as long as you have the endurance to do that. That's how positional systems work, uh, no matter what the base is. 
So just to give you uh, the words that we would use to refer to some of the popular ones, you can use, we, we're going to go through all different bases, but the, the real popular ones, because again, they are involved with computers, a base two system is called a binary system. A base eight system is called an octal. O-C-T-A-L, the prefix oct means eight. Interesting historical trivia, we're in the month of October. Is October the 10th month? Oh, I am having serious brain issues today. Is, <laughs> is October the eighth month? That was supposed to be the, the amazing question. No, it's not. It's the 10th month because oh, I've ruined it, but that's okay. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to endure today. It's because somewhere along the line, one of the, in the Roman times, one of the, one of the emperors, I think it was Julius Augustus Caesar, but I, my history might be a little fuzzy. Of course, when you're the Caesar, right, you want things named after you. And so he wanted some months named after him. So he inserted July and August into the calendar. And that's why October and the prefix for November, N-O-V, is the prefix that means nine. And December is Desi. It should be the 10th month. But they all got shuffled back because of because of the naming. So just some trivia facts right there that I messed up by asking the wrong question, but hopefully you're just thinking I'm super cute today. I, I don't know. Anyway, base 12 system is called the duodecimal. And finally, base 16 is called a hexadecimal. That's just trivia. I am not going to quiz you on that, but uh, you know, just when there's things to know, I, I want you to know them. Okay, so now here's where we get important again. What are our numerals for base 10? Remember, numerals, that word means what are the symbols we use for base 10? You're familiar with these. We've used them today. You, you use them everywhere. What are what are those symbols? You're close. I'll give you the one through nine, but not the ten. That's a that's a that's something different. But you're right. We do need the zero. So the numerals we use, the symbols, remember symbols are arbitrary. You could use any symbols. And in fact, there are parts of the world, like in India, they use slightly different symbols uh, for, for, their, for their numbers, like internally. So these are the general ones that we use. So we're a base 10 system. We have 10 symbols, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine. We're going to skip the next blank. I should probably put that at the end. The next example, then, if I had a base six system, what numerals would I need? Well, I would need a zero. But if I'm thinking in terms of groups of six, I would need everything up until six. So for base six, I need zero, one, two, three, four, and five. I need those six symbols. So I want you in exercise three to hypothesize what symbols, what numerals would you need for a base eight system? And if we're thinking of groups of eight, okay, then I need the I need symbols for zero through what? You're right. Zero through seven. I need for base eight, I need these eight symbols. For base six, I need these six symbols. For base 10, I need these 10 symbols. And so in general, whatever base you're at, whatever base it is. The, a place value system of base B, B is just a number, okay? So in this case, we've done 10, we've done six, we've done eight. It, whatever place value the system is has to have 
that many symbols to represent all the numbers you'd want to represent. So one more time, exercise four, list the numerals that you would need for a base four system. What? I'm sorry. This one right here, that's a B. So this is just the letter B that represents any base, any number. So if you have a base B system, then you have to be have you have to have B numerals. The number of numerals you have has to agree with the number of the base is what's what that's saying said another way. So exercise four, what how what numerals would we need for a base four system? Perfect. Are we good so far? Are we doing all right? All right, well, then we're going to flip the page. Now, this is going to be novel territory for you. What happens if I have a base and I want to list the numerals, but as far as our system, we don't have enough symbols, right? We have 10 symbols that we're used to. But let's say you're somebody like my daughter, the electrical engineer, who is using a different base because she does, or your calculator. I don't know if this calculator does larger bases, but some of the scientific calculators do. What will you see? Well, if you have a base 12 system, now we need 12 symbols, okay? So first, we're going to start out with the 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to nine, but that's only 10 symbols. So what we do to augment that in the case of base 12 and base 16, these are the only bases bigger than 10 we will deal with in this class. But the way we augment that is we start using letters. So the next symbol we would use is A. A represents what we would call 10. And then B represents 11. And then we count in groups of 12. So you're going to do this, for example, three, base 16. You're, all you're going to do for the next, excuse, next example is you're just going to extend the letters till you've used enough letters to have 16 symbols for base 16. What's up? Because they have two digits. And remember, for us, that's a... So the question is, why can't I just use 10 here and 11 here? Well, 10 has two digits. And now this is assuming base 10. And that's we're no longer base 10, we're base 12. So what we're going to see in a minute, this is a great question. In base 12, we're going to see, what does this number represent? Okay, If I put a 1 in this position and a 0 in this position, and I'm in base 12, what does that number represent? So I need a single symbol to represent what we would call 10 of something and what we would call 11 of something. Because that, how would I then know if this was a one and this was a two, how would I know when I go to write it, what this represented? I, am I using the one from down here or am I using the one from right here? So I can't use the same symbol because then I wouldn't be able to differentiate between different numbers. Okay, it would be like if our symbols, for instance, let's go back to the previous page. It's like, let, let's just pretend, don't write this down. There's no need for you to write this down. But it's like, let's live in the land of make-believe. And we said, okay, instead of using these 10 symbols, let's say I decided to use 0, 1, 2, and then a star, and then a triangle, and then a, then a, then a 5, and then another star, and then a square. How would I tell the difference between that, sim that symbol and what it represents and that symbol and what it represents? So I can't repeat. That would be the problem. Okay, so that's why I just don't go back around and reuse one or two. It's a really great, great question. So give me a little patience and you'll see why I can't use two digit symbols because that's going to have meaning when I go to write numbers in base 12. Okay. So the symbols for base 16 go something like this. We're going to start at zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to nine. There's the 10 symbols I'm used to. 
But now I need to add on some other symbols because if I'm counting in base 16, I can keep counting without, without having a full group of 16. So I need, I need A for 10, and then here's 11, and then 12, and then 13, and then 14, and then 15 before I get up to a full group of 16 or something. Now I know that's, that's goofy. Okay, your brain is feeling strained because you are learning to think in a new way. Okay, math is a language. You're learning a new language now. Okay, so let's take a pause and let's learn to count in different bases. Okay, so here's what I want to do. How many, just in our Hindu Arabic base 10, how many smiley faces are there right there? How many you get? 17. Now think about what the number 17 means. Here's what you did. And you do this naturally because you've been doing this since before you went to kindergarten, right? When, you're, when, you're, when your mom or your aunt, your grandma taught you to count. Okay, so let's count this and see what we did. We've got one smiley, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine smiley faces, right? And now what do we do when we get to the next one? The next one's 10. And what do we do for this smiley face? We, we carry over. We say, okay, I've got a full group of 10, right? Does that make sense? This is how you learn to count. And you don't ever think about this because you just do it naturally. But now, unfortunately, we're going to have to think about it because we're going to change bases. So then after the 10th, then you go, okay, now I've got one more, two more, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got one full group of 10 and seven more. That's what 17 means. You tracking with me? I've got one full group of 10 and seven more. So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna count those smiley faces, but now we're gonna pretend that we are on the planet where we have eight fingers. We're gonna count in base eight, okay? We're gonna count these smiley faces in base eight. Now remember in base eight, we are thinking now in groups of, uh, groups of eight. So here we go, count with me. Okay, so here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven, right? So the next one, when I count the, when I count the next one, I have what? I have a full group of eight, right? So here's how we would write that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In base eight, because that's what we're doing. I understand it's goofy in your brain. You're going to have a headache in just a minute. In base eight, when I count these smiley faces, I now have one full group of eight and zero left over. Because every place, base eight, represents eight times the previous one. So this is my units place, the zero, and this is my groups of eight. So let's keep counting. So now I have one, this would be one, one. This would be one, two, what we would call 12. This is one, three. One four, one five, one six, one seven, and then the next one. When I count again, how many groups of eight do I have? Two. So when I get to here, I now have two groups of eight and zero left over. And so now I have this one happy little smiley face on the end. So when I count the smileys in in base eight in groups of eight, I have two full groups of eight, and I have one left over. Now, so that we don't get even more confused than we started off with, when you, when you do things in other bases, uh, if, you don't, if you don't see any, anything else here, you assume base 10. When I count in group eight, I put a tiny little subscript down here at the bottom on the floor, base eight, just to tell everybody that is in base eight. So I've got two groups of eight, and I've got one left over. Okay, I know that's goofy. That's why you're going to do the next one. I What I want you to do with the smiley faces for exercise five is I want you to count them up in base six. So now what that means you're doing is you're saying, how many groups of six and how many left over do I have when I count in base six? Give it a try.
Okay, so let's count. Remember, base six. Now we're counting in groups of six. Not like we count the decimal system. We count groups of 10, right? Every group of 10, we, we, we move a number over. Okay, it's just like when you carry over, when you're adding numbers up. Now we're going groups of six. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's my first group of six right here. One group of six, zero left over. Let's go again. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's another group of six. So that's my second group of six, zero left over. And then one, two, three, four, I have five left over after that. I don't have a full group of six after I've counted. So that is two full groups of six and five extra left over. And that number two, five, we've counted in base six. So I'm going to put a little subscript right there. It's not an exponent. It's not a full size number. It's a little, it's called a subscript that lets me know what base I'm counting in. Try the next one. Count those smiley faces in base 12. Now you're counting in groups of 12 instead of groups of six or eight or 10. All right, well, let's see. When I count one, two, three, four, five, how many full groups of 12 can I make out of these smiley faces? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It is right here. That's the first full group of 12. Then how many more smiley faces do I have left over? I have one, two, three, four, five. So if I count these, if I grew up on a planet and I had six fingers on each hand, if I had 12 fingers, and so that meant we, we did a duodecimal system, that means what I would say is here I have one full group of 12, and then I have five left over, and that's base 12 counting. Now remember, has the actual value of smiley faces changed? No. It's just the system I'm counting in. 17 base 10 is the exact same value. It's the same number of smiley faces as 2, 1 base 8 and 2, 5 base 6 and 1, 5 base 12. They all represent the same quantity. They are just different ways of expressing it based on what, what the base you're using is. Okay. All right. So we're going to do two things for the rest of this section. The first thing we've already done. We did it with the Babylonian system, and we did it with the Mayan system. What we're going to do is we're going to take a number written in another base and convert it to base 10. And just to remind you, how do we do that? This is from our notes from the last section. When you convert a number, whether it's Babylonian, whether it's Mayan, or whether it's 312 base 4, when you convert another number to base 10, I'm just going to remind you, you use expanded notation. We just did this a little while ago with Mayan numbers, all the dots and lines, and we converted it to numbers we could understand. Well, we're going to do the same thing here. If you have 312 base 4, let's convert this to base 10. So help me out. In my base 4, what does the 2 represent? Units are ones. Yeah, so I have two units plus. In my base four, what does the one represent? Not tens, we're not in base 10. Represents a group of four, yes. One times four, remember base four, each place value is going to be four times the previous one, not 10 times. 
I understand though. So don't, if you said that, don't beat yourself up. You're learning something so new. It's very tough. Finally, the number three. What does the number three represent in this number? Four squared or 16s. Each place, since that's base four, if we kept going, each place is now four times the previous one because it's base four. Okay. You're gonna get to you're gonna get to practice this several times because I know this is new and different and wild. Uh, and I, I just want you to leave here feeling a little bit more secure. So just let's do the arithmetic now. Two times one is two, one times four is four. 4 squared is 16. 3 times 16, I believe, is 48. But you should definitely double check because that's the day. It's how the day has been rolling. And so 48 and 4 is 52 plus 2. That is 54. So what we would call 54, five groups of 10 and four left over, is the same value as 312 base 4. All right, exercise 7. 6053, that is in base seven. Convert that to base 10. Basically convert that to a number that we would understand. All right, let's see how you did. And then you're going to get to do another one. Just all we're doing is the same process. We're just changing the base to get more practice here. So on this number, 6053, the base is seven. The three represents what? Yep, our unit. So three times one, I'm going to put out here on the end. Okay, plus the five represents groups of what? Okay, so five times seven, it's groups of seven. And the reason is because this number is base seven. Okay, plus I'm gonna include every place. If you skipped this one and you're able to do that, that is totally fine. I have no problem with that. But just to be thorough, the zero represents what place? Groups of what? Seven squared or 49? Okay, well, zero times anything is zero. That's why if you wanted to, you could skip it if you're if you're comfortable enough. And then finally, the six represents six times what? Groups of what? Seven to the third, yes. Each place should be seven times the previous one. So one and then seven and seven squared, seven third. Now it's just a calculator problem. Three times one is three. 5 times 7 is 35. 0 times 49 is 0. I don't know what 7 to the 3rd is off the top of my head, so let's go ahead and say 7 to the 3rd is equal to 343, and then we multiply that by 6, and we get 2,058. 
And when we add all that up, 2,058 plus 35 plus 3, we get 2,096. So what we know as 2,096 of something, if that was our paycheck, if we lived in a world of base 7, this is what your paycheck would say, but they both represent the same value. All right, exercise 8. Binary, 110010. Take that binary number and convert it to base 10. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Again, I'm going to do every place. If you skipped the zeros and you're able to do that, that is lovely. Uh, so this first zero down here, that represents my units. So zero times one. Then the one that's immediately to the left, that represents my groups of two. So I have one group of two. Then I have zero. I have zero groups of, remember, each place is going to be twice the previous one. So this one is going to be two squared. And then the next zero is going to be zero times two to the third. Again, if you could skip those, that is fine. The next one is going to be one times two to the fourth. And then finally, the last one is going to be one times two to the fifth. And there we go. There's all of my numbers. And now I'm just going to use my calculator. Zero times one is zero. One times two is two. Zero times four is zero. 0 times 8 is 0. 1 times 2 to the 4th. 2 to the 4th is 16, so that's 16. And then 2 to the 5th is 32. And so when you add all those up, 32 and 16 is 48 plus 2. We get what we would call the number 50. 50 of something, if your computer was thinking about, this is how your computer, by the way, represents the number 50. 110010, when it's thinking, uh, and your calculator. Calculators are binary as well. Uh, that's how, I don't know why, uh, probably because electronics are just switches and they're either on or off. That's why everything's binary. Uh, and that's that's how it thinks. All right, exercise nine, one more of these. And then the last thing we're gonna do is something we haven't done, we did not do with Babylonian Mayan. We're gonna reverse the process and be given a, a base 10 number and wanna write it in another base.
All right, so let's give this a try. So we're in base 12 world, okay? So that's why we have to have a couple extra numerals, a couple extra symbols that represent things that we would use two digits for. Okay, so here we go. My three represents my units, just like before. That's not gonna change. What does the A represent to us? Yeah, A is what a 12 digit person would say this is right here, 10 fingers, okay? That's what I'm waving in front of the class. Uh, you can see on the camera, my ugly hands. There we go. So that is A represents what we would call 10. We use two digits for what a base 12 person would use one digit for. So that's 10 groups of 12. And then finally, four, that's four groups of what? Perfect, 12 squared. In base 12, each place value is going to be 12 times the previous one. So three times one is three, 10 times 12 is 120, and then four times 12 squared, 12 squared is 144. Uh, so then I'm gonna multiply that times four, and that's gonna be 576. And when I, when I add 576 and 120, that's 696 plus three, that is 699. Okay, so we did that with Babylonian and with Mayan, taking numbers of other bases, converting them to ours. So here's the last bit, and this is, this is new. What we're going to do is we are going to convert a number from base 10, which is ours, into another base. This is the first time we've done this. So the way you do this, to convert a base 10 to another base, we regroup using the new place values. So I'm gonna do one and then you're gonna practice three times and then uh, you'll give this all a go on your homework. And then the next time we're together, we'll have some time for you to ask questions because this is one of the hardest sections we've been over this semester. So I anticipate that there's gonna be some questions. So we'll have some time next class uh, if you need it. So when you're converting base 10 to base 12, we're gonna regroup into the base 12, the groups of whatever. So here is what I recommend. Again, because this is novel for us. We're not used to thinking like this. So here's what I would suggest you do. First, list out what the place values in base 12 are gonna represent. Okay, so in base 12, I'm gonna do this over here on the side. In base 12, I have my units, my ones, Then the next place is going to be my groups of 12. Then the next place is my groups of 12 squared. And my calculator will tell me that that's 144. Well, if I start off with 2,315, I can make groups of 144. So I'm going to try the next place. Uh, so 12 to the third would be the next place. And 12 to the third in my calculator, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, I'm not that, I'm not that good with my numbers, is 1,728. So again, I can make a full group of that out of, if I have 2,315 cans of Coke, I can make a full group. So let's try one more. 12 to the fourth. Well, 12 to the fourth, is equal to 20,736. Well, that's too much. I don't have enough in my problem, 2,315. I don't have enough objects, whatever these are, to make a full group of this. So I'm gonna cross this one out. That's not where I'm gonna start. So step one of writing a base 10 number and another base is to write out the place values until you have a place value that's too big, okay? I don't have enough objects here to make a group of 20,736, but I do have enough objects, 2,315, to make a group of 1728, and that's where I'm gonna start. So then I picked this, I picked uh, this one, this one's base 12, 
little harder to work with. I picked this for mine so that so that when you do your example, you'll see, okay, that's a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 1,728 and I'm going to see how many groups can I make of my 2315. Okay, well, 1,728 is really close to 2315. So I'm going to say that's going to be 1, 1 times 1728. Use your calculator to do this subtraction if you want. I'm just doing long division here, uh, which you learned at some point in late elementary school or, or middle school. Uh, I'm going to take the 2315 and I'm going to subtract 1728. And that leaves me a remainder of 587. Okay, so here's what I have. I'm just going to put this in parentheses. I have one full group of 12 to the third or one full group of 17, 28. So I'm just going to put a little one right there to start with. Okay. My next place value is I'm going to take that remainder and I'm going to see how many groups of 144 can I make out of it. Okay, so 587. How many groups of 144? Well, 144, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to hypothesize uh, five times 144 looks like it would be a little bit too much. Uh, so I'm going to try four. So four times four is 16, carry the one. Four times four is 16, plus the one is 17, carry the one. And four times one is four, plus one is five. So 576. So we got in just under the wire there. And then what that leaves me is a remainder of 11. So I started off with 2,315. I was able to make one full group of 1728. And now I was just able to make four full groups of 144. The next place is 12. Do I have a full group of 12 here? Can I make a, can I make a full group? No, nope. so dividing 12 into this is gonna do no good. So I'm just gonna put a zero here. I got no full groups of 12. And so then that leaves me 11 units as my final thing. I'm sorry? You're gonna be, you're gonna be right in a second. I'm just, I'm doing my scrap work here in base 10. But if you, if, if you're advanced enough, then you can write down the letter, yes, for sure. But now I'm gonna write my final answer. So when I convert 2,315 to base 12, that means it's going to be one, four, zero. And then yes, as I was just told, we need a one digit symbol for, for a, what we call 11. So that is B and then base 12. All right, so exercise 10. 273, convert that to base three. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make a little list of your place values in base three. Start here with your units. And then I would just say, work your way up. This is just your scrap work. Where did I get what? This right here is just my writing as a number, our work. So I had one, I had one group of 12 to the third. So I put the one here. I had four groups of 12 squared. So I put the four here. I had zero groups of 12 by zero. Then I had 11 units. And the way that we write the number we call 11 in base 12 is B. Great, great. Always ask those clarifying questions. It's beautiful.
while you're still working, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the place values so you can check your work. Okay, so keep working. It's just for time's sake, I'm going to get started on this problem. So I've listed the uh, the bases, or excuse me, my place values for three. I got my units, I've got my threes. And then remember, every place value is three times the previous one. So three squared makes nine. Then the next one's three to the third makes 27. Three to the fourth makes 81. Three to the fifth makes 243. I stopped there because three to the sixth would be 729. And I don't have enough objects to make a full group of 729. So that's why I stopped there. And now I'm just going to regroup. I'm going to start up here at the 243. So I'm going to take 243 and say, OK, how many groups can I make out of that? Well, how many times does 243 go into 273? One time only, okay, so 243, that's going to leave me a remainder of 30. So, so far, I've got one group of 243. Now, the next one, 81. Do I have enough of my remainder to make a full group of 81? Does everyone understand why I'm going to skip this base and put a zero here? I only have 30 things. I need a full group of 81. I don't have enough objects. So, I'm going to put a zero right here. The next place is 27. Do I have enough remainder to make a full group of 27? Yes, I do. Okay, so let's do that. 27. How many times does 27 go into 30? Once again, by the way, the smaller the base, the easier this process is to do uh, because the numbers stay smaller. 1 times 27 is 27. That leaves me a remainder of 3, so I have one group of 27. My next place value is 9. Does my remainder here of three have enough to make a full group of nine? Nope. So I'm going to put a zero here. My next place is three. Do I have enough to make a full group? Yeah, and I'll do the work, but you, I could probably ask you the question, how many times is three going to go into three? Once, but let me just write it out because I don't want to, I don't want to skip any steps here. So one times three is three. That leaves me a remainder of zero. So I have one full group of three, and then I have zero units left over. And so now when I go to write the answer, I'm just summarizing my places. So I've got one group of two, 
143. I've got zero groups of 81. I've got one group of 27. I've got zero groups of nine. One group of three, zero units, and that is base three. So one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, base three. So here's what we're going to do just because of time. These last two problems are going to be part of your homework. I will do them at the beginning of class next time. Uh, so you'll have them.